Hi, this is Darius Zangane. This video is going to be a short session walking through the general ZFS appliance interface. Uh, when you first log into the appliance, what you see here is uh, the status screen. So this screen gives you a high-level overview of uh, an different analytics, uh, such as CPU, network disk, different protocols, um, as well as other high-level uh, usage on the box. Uh, from a pool perspective, you can see how much space is used. If you have multiple pools, you would see those here. Uh, you can see compression, space available. Um, you can see some memory statistics from the DRAM memory on the box, as well as high-level overview of the services, You know if, whether they're on or not, or if there's a problem with them. In my case, most of the services are on. There's a few that aren't. I could, you can see those here. If there was one I wanted to turn on, such as like here, NIST is off. If I wanted to turn it on, I can go straight to it, enable it, you know, put in the domain and such. Uh, I can get right to it from that. So everything is hyperlinkable in here. Just like the analytics, if I see something interesting, such as here on this, you can see NFS was busy, you know, almost six days ago. I can click on that, and this will show me the last seven days of NFS activity. So then I could pick you know, what's the high point and that kind of stuff. But we'll save the analytics details for another session. I'm just showing you how the general interface works. Uh, also, you'll see a high-level overview here of the hardware. So uh, whether or not, if you have any hardware issues, it tells you how long the box has been up since it was last rebooted from a recent firmware update we did, um, uh, as well as uh, if you have any issues with disks, power supplies, anything like that. You also see alerts here. Uh, if you have any alerts set, it'll tell you if there's any alerts going on, uh, such as we have replication going on. So every time it begins and finishes, it tells us uh, here it's uh, updating us there. Other navigation in the appliance. So basically there's five tabs you can see here across the, the top. Uh, configuration, maintenance, shares, the status screen, which we're on, and then the analytics tab. And then every time you click one of these, it brings up a sub-tab. So on this screen, you can see here, there's a we're on the dashboard, which you're seeing here, but you can also change the settings of the dashboard. So you can change different thresholds uh, for those settings, as well as the layout. So what order and what protocols you want to see on the screen, you can change uh, to whatever's important to you. Uh, this is also here, you can see some NDMP reporting on this screen as well. Um, if you're using that, the configuration tab, this is where we configure things. So all the different services in the box, the storage pools in the box, the network connectivity, the SAM block level storage is configured here. Uh, the cluster configuration happens here, as well as user administration happens on this tab. And then some basic preferences are available. And then all the alerts that are available in the appliance as well. Uh, you can click on the maintenance tab and uh, you'll see a bunch of other uh, uh, options here, such as you can see the general hardware overview. So I can go in and see details of the hardware, what drives and CPU and memory, as well as the system tab. So this tab will show us if we have any issues with uh, um, any support issues going on or what firmware level we're on, that sort of thing. Uh, the problem log. Uh, the general, you know, all the different logs available on the appliance, such as alerts, faults, system audit logs, uh, phone home logs, you know, how often the box is phoning home. If it's having any issues, you'd see that. And then the workflow tab as well. The share tab, this is where many users spend a majority of their time. Here you see, this is where you create projects and shares and LUNs. Uh, and so we'll cover those in a lot more detail later, but that, this is a screen that happens, so you can, uh, very simple to create those by, typically when you want to create something, you click the plus icon. So whatever screen you're on, there's a plus icon that'll pull up, create a new file system. If I want to create a new LUN, I click LUNs and click the plus. Um, if I wanted to create a new project, I could click on projects. It gives me a list of projects, and again, I can click plus here. One other navigation tip, uh, you can click here and you can uh, to see the projects as a side pane window and you can uh, create click projects here. Something else you can do is you can move shares 
in and out of projects as well. So if I go into the account and I can take by this little grabby icon and hold my mouse and I can turn around and drop this into any project I want. I'm not going to do it, but just so you know, that is a, a ability of the system to be able to drag and drop shares and lines in between different projects. Uh, the schema setting, so the schema is where you can set up custom properties for shares, such as uh, maybe um, a department type or a phone number for the admin of a share or something like that. You could set up different properties to show up in the general tab on the uh, share screen. The status screen we've covered, the last tab is the analytics tab. So this is where we do the advanced D-Trace analytics. <clears throat> and we'll cover this in great detail, but it's again, there's a plus here. If you want to add a statistic, you can come down here and pick which one you want to add, and it'll add it in and pull up a, you know, a live view of what's going on. So here you can see we're looking at the current minute of data, and uh, there's many other things you can uh, do when you come and look in this. Uh, you hold your mouse, it'll tell you what exactly all these do. So the largest point in time, the shortest point in time, month of data, a week, you know, a day of data, an hour or a minute of data. And you can also zoom in and zoom out uh, to certain points in time. You can pause it. You can move forward and back on the historical timeline if you have historical analytics as well. As far as the sub tabs on the analytics tab, you see we're right now we're in the open worksheets, which is this is what we have open, which is nothing. Uh, you can also see here there's saved worksheets. So this would pull up an existing uh, analytics tab that someone has saved. So here you can see I have one here that has this data uh, where it's always recording it. So I can go back and I can look at a you know, very long point in time. So here's a week, uh, here's a, a month of data that's going to pull up and so on and so forth. So I could see these, pick the high point of the month, and here you can see I did 65,000 IOPS at 9.45 on, looks like around the 6th of March during the last month. And then I can quickly zoom back to the current minute. Uh, data sets, so the data sets, these are um, all the analytics that are recorded are currently being recorded all the time. So there's thousands of possible analytics. Uh, out default of the box, there's about 30 available. But uh, here you can see those, how much space they're taking on disk and how much space they're taking in memory on the system. And then lastly, there's a settings tab that lets you uh, set retention policies for the analytics themselves. So that's a general overview of uh, just navigating through the, the appliance. It's fairly self-intuitive. If uh, you just follow what the words say, that's pretty much what they do. Thanks so much for your time.